few people have been asking about um, tone and similar questions, so I thought I'd do a video just discussing various factors which affect this. Um, so I'll start talking about the guitar, just the instrument. So um, pretty much if we start with pickups, I mean, when I'm, I'm playing this kind of sound, it's always for me on the neck pickup. Um, the other thing to do with the pickup um, is if you see, maybe you bring the camera around to have a look at this. Um, on the the side for the low strings is quite a bit lower than on the high strings. Um, I find this just helps get a more even balance. Otherwise, the the bass notes come out can overpower the melody a bit sometimes. Um, and but uh, yeah, this is just stock telly neck pickup though. Um, I generally prefer single coils. I find them a bit clearer somehow, um, but um, just just as an aside, this is just my personal taste, I guess. I mean, there's no right or wrong or anything, but I'll just try and explain what I like. Um, so beyond pickups, um, I mean, I pretty much never use the bridge pickup to the point where I've lowered it as low as it'll go, just so I can feel a bit better about it not pulling on the strings so much. Um, maybe that gives more sustain, I don't know if it makes a difference at all, but I pretty much never ever take this off the neck pickup. Um, so after pickups or strings, I use these. Um, 11 to 48 basically. I don't think the brand really makes a difference. Um, I use these because the packet looks cool. Um, and um, I guess, I mean, thicker strings are going to give you a bit more sustain. Um, I just use them because 11s is kind of the thickest that I can play and still do like. kind of stuff as well. If they were thicker than that, then I'd, I'd probably struggle. Um, I have a pretty... Action is... I, I don't know what most people consider low or high, but I guess the thing I have to consider with action, and this ties in with another tone factor, is um, you can have problems with, with neck vibrato, and I'll talk more about neck vibrato, but... Um, if you like these kind of sounds, like on a chord, basic, I'll explain that more on, that on vet, neck vibrato, but if you have too low an action, then it can sort of like, I can't cause it because I've set mine up so it won't happen, but if the action is low, too low, when you pull on the neck, the strings will catch on the frets and you'll get this buzzing sound and it'll kill, it's sort of like if the action's too low, and you bend the string up high, it'll kill the sound, if you've ever experienced that. Um, so I guess with action, I basically set it as low as it can go without that happening, um, because I like neck vibrato. Um, the other thing about strings is, I think for most, you know, most of the time, you know, new strings is good, but for, I don't know, blues or rock or whatever, but um, I actually don't like the sound of brand new strings um, for this particular style, like when you go for a really sort of clean kind of, you get a bit too much, um, I just feel like the sound's a bit more forgiving once they've, they've been worn in a little bit, um, it can be a bit too bright when they're brand new. Um, so, so the other thing, yeah, neck vibrato, this is a m massive part of the tone. I mean, if, if you're not familiar with it, then it's, um, you're gonna, it's something you can do on guitars that have 
neck joints like this. Um, so basically tellies, struts. I've only ever done it on tellies, so I, I don't actually know for sure that it works quite so well on struts and other things, but anything with a bolt on neck joint like this, theoretically you can do it on. It's not like an intended design feature. Probably, it's probably a lot of people that say it's, it's very bad for the guitar, but um, I've probably been doing it on this guitar for a few years and it's, it's okay, so. Um, but the principle is, um, it allows you, you know, if you play single notes, we all like to do this kind of stuff. Um, if you want to color a chord a bit more, it's, it, all it is is a bracing kind of over here um, and this part of the guitar. Maybe it works better on tellies and things where there's no cutout because you get this hard edge to brace with, I'm not sure, but that's just kind of bracing on me here and then just pulling with the left hand and it all it really what it is doing is the neck is going like that and increasing the tension in the string so kind of like the opposite of a whammy bar pretty much so the pitch is going up when i do that you can get it to go down and the way i do that i push on my thigh but it's quite awkward so i don't really bother with that um this is the thing i mean not many people do it it's kind of ted green's one of his like signature moves pretty much like that's why he's uh, maybe you see him play and it's a bit confusing why he's always like jigging around like this but it's it, that's what you have to do to get the uh, to get this kind of sound um i find it it, color, it is a quite a big difference it colors it a lot um after a while, you just find yourself doing it without realizing. Um, so, yeah, th I think that's a big part of the sound for this kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the amp stuff a bit now. The other thing I think that subtly colors um, a lot of the ringing chords and things like that in a similar way to the neck vibrato is um, the tremolo on the amp. And I mean, you might not notice straight away this tremolo on it. I mean, I would have noticed, um, but you know, it's actually, if, if you bring me over here, just to point this setting, um, the way I always, I very rarely change my amp settings. I just set the speed as low as it'll go and the intensity at about four. I mean, because this way, like, I don't really know if, I feel like I would, maybe I would know if it wasn't there. But it, you know, obviously, if you go all the way up, you can hear it, but I, I set it about here. I like to think it, it does a little something to color the sound on these ringy chords in a similar way to the neck vibrato. Um, let me see if we can, um, so, um, I think, I, th I think maybe that does something to give it, give it a bit more life on it when it's just a, a static chord or something that's just ringing, um, it can give it a bit more life, especially when, um, it's combined with a bit of reverb, um, reverbs, I think it's really important if, it's not so important if you're playing like a hollow body or semi-hollow or whatever because they kind of have a nat natural reverb. Um, if you're playing a solid body guitar, if I turn the reverb off, that is, it's sc that's scary. The thought of playing like live with that is very scary because it's so unforgiving. Um, just a little bit of reverb. This is how much I have, if you hear on a transient. Um, the thing with, with reverb and tremolo and kind of these effects in general, I, I generally think when it's just right, um, I don't really notice it. Um, if it's really prominent and it's noticeable like straight away, then it's probably a bit too much. Um, it's just, it's just to make the sound a bit more forgiving, really, I suppose. 
Um, if you if you want to show show the setting where I, you know, it's it's on three. If you've ever used these sort of Fender black panel amps, maybe you'll know roughly what it is. But you could go, you know, this would be too much. You know. definition I just go around here because it, it it just makes it sound a bit more forgiving but the thing about combining reverb with especially neck vibrato it means you have almost like a natural chorus effect because you've got you know if you imagine the pitch is going like this you've got the pitch let's say when it's at a high point it's, it's ringing at the same time as when it was a moment ago when it was lower because you've got the trail from the reverb. So you've basically got a natural chorus effect. If you're doing net vibrato with reverb, it's essentially like a natural chorus because um, you've got, you'll have one, you have one like that's a few frequency higher than the normal one at the same time. Um, as far as EQ, people probably think this is pretty stupid, but I almost never touch the EQ on the amp. Most of the time, unless I'm out and I'm playing, trying to make it work with the room a bit more. Um, if I'm at home, it's pretty much always just treble five, bass five. Um, and the reason, the reason for that is I just do everything on here. Um, I think a lot of people overlook this, um, but I mean, if I play now with this on full, you'll, 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 if I hear this now on full, then you'll, you'll hear like it's really, it's really bright, really tinny. I take it probably two thirds of the way down. And I think this is where most of, uh, well, not most, but. Um, um, a lot of this kind of sound is coming from there. Because I'm playing with my nails, if it wasn't for that, you'd get a lot of this really overwhelming tinniness. You have to, if you're playing with your nails, you're going to have to, on a telly as well, you're going to have to fight against trying to control those high frequencies. I mean, I like clear stuff with quite a bit of highs, but, you know, if I play with my thumb, compare that to my nail, you realise that you're going to have to, you're going to have to try and control that a bit. Um, but yeah, so that's EQ, pretty much just keep it dead simple on the amp and then just try and use my ear and just get this in the right spot. Um, so, um, yeah, the, I've had a couple questions about what speakers in the amp. It's, it's just completely stock. Um, is a, so that's in this, I'm pretty sure that's a 10 inch Jensen. Um, a lot of people with Princeton's I hear put 12 inch speakers in. I can't say I've ever tried it or tried anyone's that's done that. Um, I'm pretty happy with the sound, so, so I've just left it as it is. Um, the other thing on the amp that's worth bearing in mind, um, is you're gonna want to, I mean, if you play in, yeah, you're gonna need to change the valves like often enough that that they don't wear out. I mean, I'd probably play, well, I'd probably change the valves a good amount would be like probably once every six months, to be honest. Um, I can put a link in the description if it's about particular valves, but I don't think they make a, a difference brand-wise, to be honest, but it does make a massive difference to have valves in good condition. I mean, if, whenever I change them, 
it's always like, okay, definitely needed that. Like, um, it's like changing the strings. I mean, if they're really worn out and you put new ones on, it's going to sound completely different. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something you'll need to do. If you have a valve amplifier, you, you can't just, you can't just never change the valves or so they start to sound terrible after, <laughs> once they're worn out. So, um, but yeah, uh, the other thing that is, um, kind of, that is worth talking about is, I guess the touch, but in my case, it's sort of to do with the nails. Um, when I'm playing, it's almost no flesh. I think, I mean, but the point, the point is that in general, I think, um, I like the sound to have, um, the amps turn up relatively loud, I would say touching the strings super super light the thing I always find if I ever hand someone else my guitar and don't change any of the settings they start playing and it's it's really loud so I think that tells me that I can touch the strings really ooh, some, some um, I touch the strings very very lightly I think that if you want that kind of really clear like sound that's probably the way to get it I find I can touch the strings a little bit lighter if I do have longer nails I think um, I'm pretty new to playing fingerstyle and with nails in general to be honest so I've been experimenting with it a bit but it just seems to feel a bit better to me um, the other, yeah so the thing with the nails is um, this is roughly how long I have mine for reference, um, but it's very, very different for everyone. I have oddly shaped nails, I think. They're very square, you see, which is quite hard to work with. Um, so, yeah, very different for everyone. But the one thing that is going to make a massive difference straight away to tone with nails is if you use a nail file um with a gr a fine grit to finish it i mean you use a regular nail file to get the shape and the length right but we just do so this is i have a thousand on this and it, it doesn't do anything as far as making them shorter or changing the shape at all all it but even just doing this for a couple of seconds you wouldn't believe the sound improvement it's a lot more mellow um and a lot less scratchy um, and you, I mean it feels different like when it's smoother it feels a lot better um, I'll put a link I found out about this kind of thing from a video Clive Carroll did where he's talking about um, he's talking about how he, he glues super glues ping pong ball cuttings underneath his nails and he's done that for like I don't know 20 years or something but that's like an old school classical thing, I think, but um, yeah, I definitely don't do that. But um, yeah, he's very big on, you gotta use this, like a very fine nail file to finish it off. And he's right, <laughs> it makes a massive difference to the sound. I, I didn't really believe it at first until I tried it. And then I was like, okay, yep, it definitely makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a, combination of all those things I would say um, I will put a link to there's probably I and mean, you could talk about tone forever but um, I'll put try and explain you know equipment or whatever in the in the description but let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer cheers